Hello. Okay. So we're going to be um, doing Maya for 2D artists today. Um, so this is just so for anybody who doesn't really know anything about Maya. And it's very much just the basics. So this video won't be very handy if you're watching this and you already know navigation and the toolbar and the viewport. Um, just move on to the next video, which is going to be about um, actually creating a scene, um, a very basic scene, rendering it out and then painting over it in Photoshop, which is uh, how I did my background actually. Um, so this was done in this method um, and it's very versatile and it, it means you can create um, perspective really easily and make sure it's always correct as well as um, the lighting and then you can develop on that in, um, in a, uh, a package like Photoshop. Okay, so let's get started. So just open up Maya. I'm using 2011 as well. So I think you'll probably be using 2014. And then this is us uh, with Maya open. I don't really know the names of all of the drop down menus and things like this. So if you just follow along with me, it'll be okay. But as you can see, you, you're, you open up and here's the viewport. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is um, you'll see I have um, a custom toolbar here um, and it makes it much easier for selecting tools so we're going to first make our own custom toolbar but before we do that we want to go down to our preferences which is down here and go to first undo and make sure it's on infinite also go to selection and make sure it's on whole face and this just makes it easier to actually select the polygons so once you're done with that press save and we're going to make our own custom toolbar first. So you first want to go to up here, make sure you're in polygons. That's usually, it's usually defaulted on animation, but just have it on polygons. It doesn't really matter for this, but it just makes it so it's the same as what I'm doing. And go to window, settings and preferences, and go to shelf editor. Okay, and from here, you can put the toolbar wherever you like. So we're going to want I'm going to want it next to here after surfaces. So click on surfaces and then click on this button here which is means new toolbar, new shelf, sorry. And I'm just going to call it shelf, my shelf. How about that? My shelf. Awesome. And then just go down here, save all shelves. Okay, now you see you've got a blank shelf. So I'm just going to go through some things um, and you just follow along with me that you're going to be needing. Um, you won't need all the things that I had in my toolbar because um, I'll, I use a lot of them for texturing and you know exporting them to game engines and things like this that you just you don't really need so don't worry about that too much but um, we're gonna just get the basic ones first so first go to create in fact and polygon primitives it's important and sphere but don't click it you want to press control shift and hold left click and that'll add it onto your toolbar same with cube, control, shift, left click, cylinder, control, shift, left click, and also we want a plane, okay? Okay, next, you want to go to mesh, combine, control, shift, left click, separate, and also fill hole, create polygon tool, Edit Mesh, Extrude, Control Shift Left Click, Append to Polygon Tool, Insert Edge Loop, oh no, Split Polygon Tool first, Insert Edge Loop, um, and Merge as well. Oh, and Bevel, yeah, okay. That should be okay. And then just a couple of other things. You want to go to Modify, center pivot. You'll use this one a lot. Um, as well as edit, delete all by type history. Okay, I think that should be okay. Now say you've accidentally created two of these. So, oh no, I've accidentally cl created another center pivot. Okay, so, so if you want to move or delete anything, if you hold down your mouse button, your middle mouse button, and as you can see you can drag it, over here to the little dustbin and drop it in. 
And I want to move a couple of these to the end because they're going to be used more with the center pivot. So move the combine and separate. If you hold down middle mouse button, and I want it here. Oh no, yeah, okay, there. And then the same with this one. Hold down middle mouse. Oh, it can be a bit awkward sometimes. You might have to do it a couple of times just to get it in the right position. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, the basic things that you really need. Okay, and we're just going to talk a little bit about the navigation very quickly as well, so you know how to actually navigate the space. So you've got your grid here first. You'll notice that mine's different to yours, and it's because I've got mine set up for taking uh, assets into UDK. So you don't need to worry about your grid. If you want to change your grid, here is how you do it. Display, grid, little box, tick that, and you can change it here, okay? But don't worry about having it the same as mine. It really doesn't matter. So just click apply, apply and close. And you'll also notice that I've got my poly count here as well. So if you want the same thing, it just shows you how many verts, how many vertices and how many verts and edges and faces there are in the scene. It helps me mainly so I know how to cut down on things, but also it can help if you need to merge vertices and things like this. So you want to go to display and it is in heads up display poly count. If you just tick this and also you may want, you see I've got a little view, this in the corner here. Um, the view cube. You may not have this. Mine likes to delete. Um, mine likes to delete after every time I go into Maya. So I've actually got a little thing on my toolbar so I can click it. But you go to display, heads up display, and also view cube. And I'll put that on my timeline as well. So control, shift, and left click. And it can be much easier. So first, to get to other views, we're in the perspective view just now. If you press, just press it once, the um, the space bar, and it goes into this four view here. And you can see here it's written the top view, the front, and the side, and then this is the perspective. So, okay, this makes it much easier for us when we're modeling. So you can go, if you want to go into this view, just hover your mouse over it and spa press space bar. And now you're in the top view. And because of having this, this view cube as well, we can switch around and we can go to whichever view we kind of want. So now we're upside down, so you can flip it around. It makes it much easier. Press F to zoom back into the normal view. Okay. Now that we're in top, I want to go back to my perspective view. So press the space bar, hover over perspective, and press space bar again. Now if you want to, if you forget that it's space bar as the hotkey, you can also click on these buttons here. So this goes to the four view and then back to perspective. And as you'll notice, there are a lot of buttons around. You won't be using many of these, um, except for your tools are very important. These ones are important, and these ones are, but you're going to be using the hotkeys for them. So, for instance, well, let's um, first create a cube. So I'm going to click on my cube, and I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to actually, I'm going to just click on the center. Okay, now my cube is tiny, so to zoom in on that, I'm going to press F. Now to scroll out from this as well, I can scroll with my middle mouse in and out. A better way to scroll is holding Alt and holding right click. And you'll see your, your cursor changes. And now if you move your mouse left and right, you'll zoom in and out. And this can be more accurate for zooming. It can be a lot more helpful. Okay. So from that, I want to zoom out and I've realized, oh, my cube is tiny. Okay. <laughs> so first, let's make the cube bigger, and then we'll work around it. So if your channel box isn't already open, this is what this box is called on your right-hand side. If you've got this button open, this is your attribute editor. Don't worry too much about the names. It really doesn't matter. But if you've got this open, click this button, and it'll hide it. And if you've not got this open, and it's like this, click this button, and it'll open your channel box editor. And now you'll see because this is active, I just clicked away there. If you click on it, click on polycube, and you can change the size here. So I'm going to make this 10 by 10 by 10. And I'm just holding tab, pressing tab to go down to them. Okay. So now I just zoomed out, and I've got my cube here. So, okay, I don't really like that I'm viewing this in the... Um, the wireframe. I really want to see it as a solid so I can see the faces instead of like seeing through it. And press 5 on the keyboard 
and that's your hotkey. If you press 4, it goes to wireframe 5 to then have it solid. If you forget what they are, it's here. You can press wireframe or in solid here, so don't worry about too much about remembering the hotkeys. It'll be on the viewport if it's something as simple as that usually. So that's all you need to know really first. So now I've got it solid. Okay, now you just saw me pan around there. I held down Alt and left click and it'll rotate around. And because I've got it selected and I pressed F before, I'm, I'm rotating around the object, which can be very helpful. That's why F is always very good, so you can focus in on whatever you're working on, okay? If you hold down Alt and hold down middle mouse button, you can pan around. So these are the most important buttons probably for actually navigating the space. Alt and left click rotates, Alt and middle mouse pans, Alt and right click drag left and right, zooms, or just zoom at the middle mouse. So that's, that's much better. So if you hold down right click whilst hovering over the object, you can see um, a menu appears with lots of buttons. So this is just so we can select which areas we want to select on the object. So we have object mode selected just now. If we hold down right click and I want to select ver vertex, it means I can select the verts that are at the corner of the object. So now, if I want to zoom into these, I can left click and drag a box around these two. And I really want to work on some detail on them, so I'm going to focus on them. So press F after they're selected. And see now my camera is rotating around these. And this can be very handy to know. But I want it to be around the object, so I'm going to go back to object mode and click on the object and press F. And now my camera is rotating around the object. And to then actually move the object, or to move those verts, or edges, or whatever we have selected, the hotkeys for this are W, E, and R. They're also here. So you've got your Move tool, Rotate, and your Scale tool. So I'm going to press W, which is my Move tool. And you can see that the pivot has um, appeared. And I can use the pivot. Um, make sure that you're using its arms to uh, move around. If you move the middle, it can be difficult to know actually where the object's being placed. So control Z, that, and it's back in the middle. Or it's back where it was anyway, it's not exactly in the center. But then if you want to rotate this, I'm going to... So you've got the rotate button here, but you want to use your hotkey, it's much quicker. E, rotate, same sort of thing. Make sure you're rotating around the axes. If you use the outside one, it can be difficult to know kind of where you're actually rotating and uh, how the object's actually looking. So control Z. Okay, now I want to scale it. So I'm gonna use the hotkey again, it's here, if you want to click it on the viewport, but I'm gonna use the hotkey R. And as you can see, you can scale. So you can uniform scale by selecting from the middle and dragging with left click. To non-uniform scale, select one of the arms, hold it and drag, and you can create some Pretty, a lot of shapes by doing this sort of thing, by just knowing these simple tools. With the um, rectangle selected, if we press W to go back to the move tool, if your arms are perhaps like this, or like this, um, to change the length of the arms, you press minus and plus on the keyboard. So maybe they're too small and you're like, oh, I, I can't move it, like I can't move it accurately, maybe. So press plus and minus, and you can change the size of those. So that can be a really handy thing to know, just in case you've accidentally pressed them. And that's pretty much the most basic things you need. Everything that we're going to be covering in the next video, I really don't want to make them too lengthy. Um, but this is definitely just the basic things that you need to know. Um, just a couple of other things. Control D duplicates. There you go. Um, you know, shift, uh, left click selects two objects or multiple ones and um, dragging a box around selects them um, say you wanted to make an edge loop on this so you want a division to go around the middle you could do this like like this I then click 
on this to cancel it because I just want to leave as that. Oh no, I really want to add another ledge loop along this way. Instead of clicking up here, a quicker way of doing it is G. And now I've got that tool selected again because it was it, G is the last tool selected. And I can then continue on like this. Press the selection tool again up here to cancel that. Um, and that's pretty much it. That's the most basic things you're going to need to know. Hold right click object mode. I've got all these inputs because I've been putting edge loops on. To then speed up the, the speed uh, my up a bit, you want to delete the history. Delete history. And it, because we've got this uh, on our toolbar, it makes it much quicker. Okay, that is really all the basic things you need to know. You really don't need to know anything else for now. Um, so you can have a mess around with those. If not, just go straight to the next video. Okay, thanks.